Imagine this movie poster. There's a clean white background, maybe some red or pink in the title, and a woman is leaning her back against a guy who has that classic romantic comedy smirk on. Sounds like I'm describing Pretty Woman, right? Well, I am. But I'm also describing intolerable cruelty. Four Christmases, The Ugly Truth, Love, Wedding, Marriage, Bride Wars, and even My Girl Did It. But don't get me wrong, romantic comedies also do the same pose without a white background. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Ghosts of Girlfriends Past, I mean, Matthew McConaughey really likes to lean. See what I mean? But anyways, back to the back-to-back -back pose. Two weeks notice, no reservations, laws of attraction, and most recently with night school. I think you get the point. Having two main characters stand back-to-back -back is one of the most overdone movie poster cliches, specifically with romantic comedies. It shows the inevitable complicated love story, or friendship story, between the two main characters. But this isn't the only overdone movie poster look. We took a look through thousands of movie posters through a large movie poster database and started to notice some similarities. Of course, not all movie posters use the same formulas I'm about to show you, but a lot of them do, and they are eerily similar. So much so that we couldn't believe we didn't notice it before. Movie posters have been used since the 1920s. When we look at movie posters throughout history, we can see some parallels, but it wasn't until the 1990s when it became more obvious how movie posters were copying each other. By the 1990s, the movie posters started to imitate other types of art. Pulp Fiction copied a magazine, while Jurassic Park copied the book cover, and we started to see similar poses and themes pop up during this time. Look at all these posters in the 1990s. The classic giant face over a tinier scene from the film screams drama. This look jumped over to romance films where they did the same thing, and a lot of them were situated over a body of water. But the tropes don't stop there, and movie posters started using articles of clothing to define the characters. A woman wearing a red or pink dress draws your focus and depicts them as the romantic center of attention. This has commonly been used since cinema's inception and is still being used today. But forget about articles of clothing for a second. If you want to show suspense, you're going to have to see some vigilantes from the back. Close up on eyeballs will show horror or a psychological thriller. I mean, what good are showdowns if you don't show them face off in the poster? And of course, for raunchy films, we'll see the cast through someone's legs. But a few other films that aren't particularly raunchy have borrowed this device as well. It's not just similar layouts, articles of clothing, and poses though. Color palettes also play a huge part in movie poster designs. They tell the audience what the movie is going to be like without us even realizing it. Let's go back to that image of Matt Damon running in Born Identity. Notice how it's predominantly orange and blue? I now present to you the heart and soul of action movies. Basic color theory states that when you put two contrasting colors together, the colors will pop and grab our attention. Orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel and represent opposing concepts all around us. Fire versus water, explosions versus technology, and dusk versus dawn. Contrast equals drama, and these two colors serve those ideas seen over and over again in action movies. You can see how using common movie poster ideas can convey the story, genre, and the themes of the film at a glance. They're not just happy accidents. The designers know what drives audiences into the theaters. And if they're looking for a guaranteed box office success, they're going to stick with what they know works from previous posters and consumer data. And marketing for movies is incredibly expensive. According to the Motion Picture Association of America, in 2007, the average cost of marketing a studio movie in the US was $37 million. And that number gets even higher when considering the marketing on a global scale. That's a lot of money to put on the line for a visual that might not work. These are the movie posters for the Oscar nominees this year. There's no data on what goes into an Oscar-nominated poster in comparison to other posters. But 
These don't use a lot of the tropes that we've discussed before. Of course, not every film is going to fit into one of those visual looks, but there's no denying the similarities between all of those posters. And now that I've pointed them out to you, you'll probably notice them everywhere, if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And ring the bell below, that way you're notified whenever we post a new video.